All right, so then we go to our presentation on the open book for doctoral education in technology enhanced learning. This will be presented by Benedict Hansen from RWTH University in Germany and myself. And I will just say a few uh, introductory words about this. So the open book for doctoral education in Tel is meant to be a platform for sharing um, educational resources for master and doctoral students in uh, the field. This uh, is meant as a platform for us, the community, to write and to share and publish the um, educational resources in a form of chapters, as we call them. They are all book chapters, but they have a specific um, way of uh, being written and a way of being shared. And um, we have built it in the form of a GitHub uh, book. And this is uh, basically meant for anyone in the community to be able to contribute. And this is also meant for anyone in the community to be able to support and uh, maintain. So we, we think that the book chapters that we're writing and the uh, educational resources that we're sharing and publishing is this book to be um, written initially by one or multiple authors, but then uh, updated and extended by others. And we also think that um, the um, platform and the um, the space that uh, we've created for writing and editing can be kept alive uh, much longer than our project and to be maintained. The um, typical scenario for um, the new chapters uh, becoming part of the book would be for members of the community, um, supervisors, teachers, researchers, practitioners, but also including uh, PhD students themselves to be able to uh, share their educational resources and their experience in teaching about uh, specific topics in technology enhanced learning in a form of these uh, book chapters in an open book. And documenting both online training events and face-to-face um, -face training events. So this said, I would like to invite uh, Benedict to give us a live demonstration. Um, yeah, so hello from me. Um, let me just share my screen. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough. Um, yeah, so now we can go over the, the online version of the book. Um, so this is uh, the book. Um, in, in the HTML version. So it's essentially a website uh, that you can go over and um, yeah, take a look at, at the different chapters um, here. There is a table of contents where you can see the different chapters. So for example, we had the, the preface with some introduction and some copyright information about the book itself and then the different chapters. So we can uh, take a look at, at some of them. So uh, for example, the systematic literature review, which um, yeah gives you an introduction on how to, to do this. Um, this one also has, has uh, this nice um, widget in it, which means that you can actually uh, yeah, go ahead and um, yeah, track your progress with the chapter. So if you're now reading this chapter, you can um, go back and see what the learning goals are. And if you then uh, click on it, you can actually set some percentage value on how far you've uh, you've come with this uh, with this particular aspect. And it will then update the um, the learning goal itself to to show you um, how far you've actually now proceeded with the entire chapter itself and then the chapter itself is of course just um yeah the, the text it's uh, um the text um similar to how you would find it in in any book so we have this kind of uh text uh, based um um yeah content but then also augmented with additional things that you can put on websites like this interactive um elements and then also um uh, yeah, you can put anything on there um, as well. So here in this qualitative research part, you can have these uh, these kinds of tables as well um, that you can see. And um, yeah, we can also put in some um, some videos. So once you've recorded um, like a, like a video lecture as well, you can also augment that into into your book here. And this way, you can really uh, yeah create these different kind of chapters and uh, put in the uh, the things that that you need to to convey your topic. 
Um, there are also different kinds of chapters uh, marked here at the top with these different icons. So you have um, like, a, like a reading chapter, for example, marked by this book. But you can also have um, like practical chapters that um, are more hands on that would then have get uh, different kinds of icons. And this then immediately tells uh, the, the reader um, what they're looking at and what kind of content they can expect from, from the different parts of the chapters. Um, yeah, so overall, we have currently um, 12 contributors um, uh, for the book uh, who have written these uh, these different uh, contents. And there's also a team of um, technical support uh, people who um, are also able to uh, help with, uh, for example, giving, um, yeah, answering questions, uh, generally helping with the writing setup and uh, getting, uh, yeah, um, all the support um, that is necessary for the authors. Um, yeah, so if I then go and I can also show you there's also a support um, um, structure on the um, on our Discord. Um, so if you join the Discord, there's also um, like a um, uh, like a support channel where where the support team is and uh, they can also help you and get um uh, get you some some un questions answered there um then next step would be to um take a look um at the online book um on in its in its uh, infrastructure um this is by the way also a um a book that is not the, the first book that uh, that we're doing we also have some experience with that um using uh, previous uh, books uh, so for example we have an augmented reality book um, this one um, is a similar in structure and uh, and has um, also been created in the same kind of, uh, of procedure and so um, we've kind of now um, iterated on that and and seen also the, the pro uh, processes of writing these books and how they uh, can be optimized and and um, yeah be created in a good way. And so this is now for for the detail book again um, the the structure. So we have this this book here on on GitHub, which is essentially like a repository where you can put all the source files on on how to write um, the book. It has a readme uh, file uh, underneath it where you can see um, the different kinds of um, instructions on how to set it up for local development, for example. You need some uh, some software that you can install then and then you can uh, start using it. Um, I will also uh, give a short demonstration of that part. And then there's also some information about how to contribute. Um, this is also uh, done specifically here for the um, GitHub uh, part. So what you would do is you would fork the um, repository first if you're an external collaborator. So you get a copy of the repository in your own um, repository. Uh, once you have that, um, you can start altering this the structure um, here. So for example, you can see we have this chapters um, folder in here. In there, there is this uh, sorted the different kind of chapters that we have. And in there, there are markdown files, uh, which can be used to, to write the topic. And this markdown structure is really simple and you can really quickly get started and, and uh, get writing. Um, so if I take a look at the war file, um, you can see it's um, it has some, some pre-meta in here, which is essentially telling some metadata. You can copy that from any chapter in the, in the book and then alter it like you want. And then you can start um, essentially just putting in the text and um, there are really a little um, uh, kind of formatting that you need to do. So for example, headlines get these two hashtags in front of them. And so you can really quickly create um, uh, this without having really technical knowledge because you can just start typing and uh, and most of the text will just appear um, like you've typed it. And then there are only these, these kind of um, smaller things like having a bold formatting with these double stars. Um, and get this one in there. And there are lots of um, uh, guides online on how to write these markdown files. And it's it's really simple to, to use. So you don't actually need to, to be a web developer to, to it contribute to this website. You can just have this kind of text in here. And it's also really simple to um, yeah um, alter these uh, in a sense to, to make these um, or to, to work on them online here in this, uh, in this um, book environment on, on GitHub. 
So what you can do is um, once you've opened the a page, you can click this this little um, uh, pencil icon, and then you just get this uh, this uh, version here where you can just uh, start typing and um, and make some some alterations in there. So you can, for example, um, now add a add a new headline here. Um, and once you do, you also have this preview tab at the top, which you can use to um, to preview um, how it will look like. It will, of course, not look exactly like it's in the book here. Um, this is a bit limited in the online um, uh, editing environment. Um, I will later show you also the local environment where you can get a real um, view of how it will look like in the final book. But this is just um, gives you already an idea of how the formatting will be. So you can see that this, this new headline has now appeared here. And um, this way uh, you can change things. And once you've done that um, here at the bottom, you can commit changes. So it works in a way that um, you make these kind of snapshots of the book and you post them. And once you do, um, they're, they're still in, in your private repository at that point, so in your forked repository. And then later on, you create a, um, a kind of a pull request for them to bring them into the new version um, or to to make them available into the live version so i could then for example type something in here that uh, what has changed so this is the the message um, that i'm telling uh, what i've done so this would be something like an example headline um, and uh, then i can commit this for example either to a new branch or if you're working on your um, forked version you can also bring it uh, to the master branch directly and then once you click commit um, they are in first of all in your own snapshot and um, what you would then do is um, yeah create a pull request out of that and this pull request is then uh, posted um, in here and you can see that there are lots of things that uh, people have already contributed so this is how the book actually was made um, using this kind of pull request each one of them has sort of small changes in them like adding a chapter or um, also just uh, working on some small fixes for existing chapters and um, yeah we can also take a look maybe at, at one of them um, and uh, in there you can see also that the web view um, uh, format that we have. So once you post these um, these changes, um, you can have a look at the commits that uh, that were made. So really, these kind of snapshots that you can create, you can create multiple in a line and then post them as one bundle of an update to the live book. And, um, and then you can go over these and see um, first of all the the comments of what has changed. So this is them written by the authors. And uh, you can also take a look at the files that were changed. So this will give you a really a, diff, uh, a differential view on on the lines that were changed. So you can see that these were all added in here. And uh, for example, in here there was some existing content, and then there was this new line added. Um, so this is really helpful in getting um, yeah for a web viewer, for example, that they can see which parts of the book were now um, altered and in which way. And you can then use that um, to have this conversation about the the new um, additions to the book. So um, if you scroll down, there's this uh, thread here where some web viewers, for example, asked for some changes to be made. And um, then there was some conversation about that. And in the end, um, uh, the uh, the changes were then approved. And uh, so then we are kind of in the similar web view process that you know from scientific papers of um, approving um, or rejecting uh, additions and then also asking for changes. This is all possible with the system here. Uh, in a really uh, kind of um, intuitive manner because you just have this kind of conversation thread that you can go through. And once you've done that um, uh, and they're approved, um, they are merged into the master version, which means that at that point they will become available online in the book and then they will appear for everyone to see. Um, and that is um, kind of the the workflow that that we're working with. So it's it's really intuitive for non technical people. Once you um, just take a look at these uh, at these different environments and at the different tabs that you have available here, um, and so this is really kind of straightforward uh, to work with. And then for advanced users, we also have um, a local uh, the possibility to work locally. Um, which means that you can actually go ahead and um, yeah work on this um, in your local file directory. So what I can do is um, need to switch the 
to the next uh, screen for that. Okay. Um, so what we can see here is um, once you clone this book, uh, you get um, all the files that you've just seen in the repository. They are now also here. And once you've installed all the tools, you can um, yeah, go ahead and uh, yeah, start editing them. So um, these are, of course, mar since they are markdown files, you can do anything in here with these um, uh, files. So you can edit them, for example, using a normal text editor, or you can use something more advanced like Visual Studio Code, um, which I'm just briefly going to show. So switch for that yeah so um now i'm in visual studio code which is just an editing environment um that you can use to uh, to work on these markdown files uh, so again here um once you've opened that you get the the same structure in here and you can start editing these files there's also a preview feature, so you can open this um, uh, here, and then you have this side-by-side -side view, similar to how you have it in most uh, Tech uh, editors as well when you're writing papers with Tech. Uh, so you can um, do essentially the same things here. So I can now start um, typing here and uh, write a new headline, which will then show up here at the top. And um, what I can then do is to um, also show the the live uh, how the how it will work, uh, look like in the final website version. So this again, like it was in the online version, is just sort of the formatting preview, but it doesn't really show the the website itself. And to do that, um, I need to have Ruby installed, uh, which is also explained in the uh, readme. And once I do, I can just um, write um, this specific uh, command, which is also documented in the in the readme of the project. And once uh, I do that, it will start um, yeah, uh, compiling the um, book. So it's not generating the book in the background. And um, once it's, it's finished with that, it has this, uh, it's uh, like uh, a live view um, of the book. So once you, you do some changes, it will automatically um, uh, find them and um, compile them into your local preview of the book. Uh, so it now says that um, uh, the book is running locally here under this uh, address. So I can copy that. And if I now go back to um, here and paste this one in, uh, I see that I get again the book, but this is now not the online version, but the local preview. So uh, anything um, that I do will now appear in here. So if I go back into here, um, uh, we will get the uh, the changes that I just made once I have saved it. So I have now saved the file and you see it has found that there is a change. It regenerated the um, web page. And if I now refresh it, you see that there is this new addition in here. And this way you can then also work with a like a live preview of how the website will look like. Then again, um, locally you have to create this commit and this this git commit, um, post this online, and then um, it will go into this review process. And this way, uh, yeah, you you essentially then get the um, the same review process that that I just showed you. And uh, yeah, once this is done. Um, we have this kind of action set up, uh, which means that the book is automatically going live. So what it does is um, what I just showed you with the um, with this command line interface here, which generates a site. The same thing is happening online as well. Once you, once something is pushed to the um, main version of the book, and then it's it's uh, automatically deployed, which means that it will appear on the online version of the book. And this way. Um, yeah, we are going. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to um, to have the update in near real time once an, a change has been um, accepted for publication, and then it's also in the book. Okay, I think that um, would conclude the the demo of the book. So you've seen this. Uh, this is kind of um, 
this whole um, infrastructure setup of uh, it's really sustainable in a way that um, you only need this this kind of uh, core team of contributors. It has this open source model, meaning that you can actually um, uh, give this to interested uh, participants uh, to take on the role of, for example, web viewers or um, also um, yeah, looking at the different parts of the of the book and and giving technical uh, instructions in there and this way um, you can really uh, kind of uh, have an interested community around it who can self-organize and and keep this book alive and extend it in a way um, also beyond the the uh, boundaries of the project and uh, yeah fill it with even more content than that we already have okay so thank you very much <laughs>